It's over. The COP15 climate change conference ended today in Copenhagen. But as world leaders gathered in the final week to lend their support to a successful outcome, it soon emerged that a legally binding treaty to replace the Kyoto Protocol remained just out of reach, which could be good news for the ICT sector, which failed to get recognition for the positive effects of ICTs on climate change. The ITU pushed hard to get ICTs recognised and held meetings and events at the recent series of climate change talks. I spoke with ITU Secretary General Hamadoun Toure via telepresence, one of the many smart solutions to climate change. Well, uh, people are looking at mechanism here. Some countries are looking at uh, financing mechanism. Some people are looking at uh, the mechanism in which, by which those financings will be deployed. We are saying whatever solution will come out, technology uh, solutions are there, and therefore we will be able to find the right financing mechanism for them. In fact, the ICT technology does not need a fi an external financing. This is one issue that we've been talking during the financial crisis, that the ICT sector does not need a, fi a government bailout. All it needs is a good policy that will uh, give the opportunity to private se for private sector to evolve, to compete, bring solutions, bring applications and services, create new jobs, you know, and bring innovative solutions that will help actually save the planet, telepresence, use of video conferencing, uh, e-health, e-education, e-government, e-commerce, all of those are platforms that will help us reduce the, the, the greenhouse gas emissions. And we have, uh, we have seen many innovative solutions being demonstrated here so that the world leaders can see them as well. And um, private sector CEOs that came here who came here have been able to help us really pass that message very well. So whatever the resulting COP treaty, how does ICT benefit from, from being acknowledged in there? If it's not for, for money, th then what's the reason for being in the treaty? Well, when government takes the right decision, policy decision to have e-government strategy, to have a vision, say vision 20, I was talking to one country yesterday, uh, Lesotho, Prime Minister of Lesotho, is saying he wants to have a vision 2020 on ICT broadband strategy. And we have countries like the United States who have, uh, President Obama has a, his broadband initiative. Just like that, you see that this issue is not an issue of uh, developing or developed countries. It's not an issue of one accusing the other for the, for the problems. It's an issue of how we, this is a tool that can help us resolve the problem. And they're working together. So I'm saying to Prime Minister of Lesotho, if you have a right uh, ICT policy, private sector will come and invest because this is a profit-making business. But you need to have the right policy in order to attract them so that they can come do business at the same time. They will create uh, new services and applications. And government has to be involved in creating the first new services that will help uh, those companies to, to start evolving, creating a mini Silicon Valley in every country in the world. That's possibilities, you know. This is what we are talking about here. And th this is an area where innovation is a driver. Our industry is based on human brain, the brain power, and it is a natural resource that is unlimited. And, and, and every country is, is equally distributed on all countries in the world, developing, develop, but government has to concentrate on one thing is the policy and the second thing in capacity building and all those issues are being dealt with in the discussion here in Copenhagen. There is still a chance for the ICT sector to be recognized in the resulting text which will provide an incentive to the industry to invest in emerging nations, help reduce the digital divide and combat climate change through low carbon solutions. Now is the time for all parts of the ICT sector to come together and convince the governments of the world that by implementing smart ICT solutions, they can quicken the reduction of their CO2 emissions, 15% by 2020 and up to 40% by 2050. And that's just through the use of ICTs. Some of the government uh, heads that I have met yesterday since my arrival uh, are assuring me that they are putting uh, broadband strategies back home, and they are, they are expecting help from ITU. 
So the issue of ICT as a solution has been very, very well understood here. For our part, Telecom TV will continue the Green Planet documentary series in 2010, showcasing actual examples of ICTs being used in the fight against climate change around the world. If you haven't yet watched any of this year's videos, then please do so and let us know about examples of green ICT in action. With no legally binding global treaty to support their efforts, ICT vendors, operators and solutions providers are going to have a tough time in getting governments on a wide scale to buy into green ICT. Whatever the outcome of future COP conferences, the world still needs smart ICT solutions if we are to realise the dream of a low carbon future. This is Guy Daniels for Telecom TV at the Climate Change Conference in Copenhagen.